Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Much hyped, Virgin Galactic test flight succeeds. Also, FAA releases policy on training in experimental primary and limited categories. And Oshkosh features remote pilot proficiency training sessions. Happy Monday, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Sunday was a big day for Virgin Galactic, but some glitches to the live feed left viewers not impressed. Virgin Galactic's VSS Unity successfully reached space Sunday, completing the company's fourth rocket-powered space flight. With a number of in-flight streaming problems, some overt celebrity posturing, and an over-reliance on gushing hero worship of VG Boss Branson, a fully crewed test flight came off, well, before previously postulated schedules, though it might occur. Thankfully, despite the rush seemingly created when Blue Origin announced their flight schedule, all seemed to go well. The weather-delayed flight was the 22nd test flight of VSS Unity and the first test flight with a full crew in the cabin, including the company's founder, Richard Branson. The crew fulfilled a number of test objectives related to the cabin and customer experience, including evaluating the commercial customer cabin, the views of Earth from space, the conditions of conducting research, and the effectiveness of the five-day pre-flight training program at Spaceport America. The mission specialists in the cabin were Beth Moses, Chief Astronaut Instructor Colin Ben, Bennett, lead flight operations engineer Sarisha Badla, vice president of government affairs and research operations, and Branson. The undersung VSS Unity pilots were Dave McKay and Michael Masucci, while Kelly Latimer and CJ Sturkow piloted VMS Eve. After the break, Smart Sky Networks receives nod from FCC. More news after these messages. AirVenture may be your destination, but shouldn't you also have a great experience during your flight to and from? Battle Creek Executive Airport is the home of Waco Aircraft, the world's leader in new production sport biplanes. Enjoy a beautiful new FBO, extreme fuel discounts, a glimpse into Waco's manufacturing facility, and the gourmet Waco kitchen, an upscale dining experience serving farm-to-table American-European fusion cuisine. Experience AirVenture. Experience Waco. We'll see you on the ramp at KBTL. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Smart Sky's ground-based remote radio head for its air-to-ground network has received FCC certification. This marks another technical milestone for Smart Sky and further progresses towards the commercial launch of their network later this year for aviation operators and passengers. With future complete status of the network hardware and software achieved, and with existing tower and terrestrial network infrastructure in place, Smart Sky is rapidly expanding its network. The University of North Carolina takes delivery of its third TBM. Dyer has delivered a TBM 940 to UNC Air Operations, the flight department for the UNC Hospital and the University of North Carolina, bringing this customer's TBM fleet to three. All three TBMs operate from the University of North Carolina's flight department at Raleigh-Durham International Airport, and the combined fleet is expected to log approximately 1,000 hours annually. The top-of-the-line TBM 940 joins a TBM 850 that was received in February 2012 and a TBM 700 C2 delivered in March 2011. B-21 Raider artist rendering shown to public. The Air Force has released a new B-21 Raider artist rendering graphic with fact sheets. 
As with past renderings, this rendering is an artist's interpretation of the B-21 design. The new rendering highlights the future stealth bomber with Edwards Air Force Base in California as a backdrop. The 420th Flight Test Squadron based in Edwards Air Force Base will plan, test, analyze and report on all flight and ground testings of B-21 Raider. SAFE offers initial comments on FAA DPE report. The FAA Industry Advisory Group formed on June 2019 to investigate problems with the agency's designated pilot examiner system has issued a 101-page report. The Society of Aviation and Flight Educators notes that the report largely codifies many suggestions for increasing DPE availability circulating in the industry for years, but the report also reflects disagreements as to who and how to test applicants efficiently for certificates and ratings and other suggestions. The group highlighted many unresolved questions in the Air and testing process. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. FAA releases policy on training in experimental, primary, and limited categories. The FAA has just released a policy addressing the issue of training for compensation or higher in experimental, primary, and limited category aircraft. The policy follows up on a letter that asserted that without exception, no compensated flight training can take place in these aircraft categories without an exemption or letter of deviation authority. The newly announced policy maintains that position while offering a short-term solution that allows these operations to continue. The policy confirms the FAA's position that any instructor is operating an aircraft regardless of who owns, rents, or otherwise uses the aircraft, and regardless of whether the use of the aircraft is compensated. Therefore, paying any instructor to provide training violates the FARs. For as long as can be remembered, the FAA rules were interpreted as an instructor could not usually charge for use of the aircraft, but could charge for flight instruction services. FAA's own policy on LODA has backed this up, explicitly stating that such private individuals did not require LODA. The FAA explained in their policy statement that the previous policy on LODAS was erroneous. The stunning turnabout meant that tens of thousands of rule-abiding pilots and instructors are instantly out of compliance with FARs. After these messages, Oshkosh features remote pilot proficiency center training sessions. Details after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Errol Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. Oshkosh features remote pilot proficiency center training sessions. The Pilot Proficiency Center at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2021 is expanding its reach this year as it is offering its high-quality simulation exercises and scenarios even for those who can't be at Oshkosh in person. The remote opportunities are in coordination with flight instructors who are members of NAFI and SAFE. These dedicated aviation instructors staff the Pilot Proficiency Center at Oshkosh each year. We will be providing the same quality simulation mission exercises and scenarios featured at Oshkosh, but in your home or at a select flight training center near you, said Radek Wierzykowski, EAA Manager of Flight Proficiency. We'll connect you with experienced instructors who have trained with proven simulation missions and state-of-the-art remote training tools. It's designed to improve piloting and decision-making skills for pilots regardless of their experience level. To participate, pilots 
unable to come to the Pilot Proficiency Center at Oshkosh can use one of two options. One, receive remote instruction from your own home. If you own a home-based Redbird ATD simulator, requirements include an up-to-date Redbird simulator and a computer video camera connected to a Zoom meeting platform, or fly at any of the 14 flight training centers throughout the United States that are equipped with Redbird simulation systems. Well, that does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.